today is Tech Tuesday. So I thought it would be great to highlight a tech genius. His name was Garrett Augustus Morgan, senior, born March 4th, 1877, in Claysville, Harrison County, Kentucky, which of course was exclusively a black community outside Paris, Kentucky. He was uh, an inventor, of course, a businessman, a leader. I'm gonna get into all of that in a second, but he um, only went to school up to the sixth grade. He went to Branch Elementary School in Claysville, and then he moved out to work because, you know, it's the 1800s. You got you got to work, you know, black black people, or you can get arrested. People don't even know if you didn't work, you could get arrested and picked up for loitering and end up on a chain gang. Like that's that's how you think about how crazy that is. You you're released from bondage. You're like, yeah, I'm free. No one will hire you because I'm not paying you for something I was just getting for free. Get on out of here. Now you out roaming in the streets. You literally could get arrested. Uh, I wonder if that was by design. Of course it was. Put on a chain gang and then be re-enslaved. Hello, 13th Amendment butt clause, there for a reason. Anyway, Garrett was like, you're not going to hit me up. So he went out to Ohio at the age of 14. Think about that. And he started doing handiwork for a landowner in Cincinnati. Uh, of course, he had to quit school. So instead of like just saying, oh, well, he hired a tutor. He worked during the day. At night, he would get tutored and learn all of the things he was missing in school. By 1895, he moved to Cleveland, where he began repairing sewing machines for a clothing manufacturer. And this got him interested in how do these things work, right? And that's what technicians, you know, tech, we, we talk about Tech Tuesday. Tech is just an answer to a problem. So Garrett would be sitting there looking, I'm going to call him Mr. Morgan because I'm going to give him his respect, looking at how the machine worked and he started fixing as the machines would break down, he would fix, he would repair them. By 1907, he opened his own sewing machine shop. He got so good at repairing the busted machines, you know, people would just toss them out. He would fix them. One year later, you know, he helped in addition to having the sewing machine shop, he helped start something called the Cleveland Association for Colored Men in 1908. One year after that, he and his wife, Mary Ann, opened Morgan's Cut Rate Ladies Clothing Store. So with the sewing machines, they made clothes, then they opened the store to sell the clothes. You understand, you know how we do. When they say okay. uh, jack of all trades, master of none, that does not apply to us. Does not. We master it all. Anyway, the shop which made coats, suits, dresses, and other clothing eventually ended up employing 32 people. So you think about a man whose parents were both born in bondage, who moved out on his own at 14, self-taught, learned how to fix things, opened a store. He and his wife opened another store and together they employed 32 people. So you think about the folk in the community who uh, owe their livelihood to one man with a vision, but this doesn't even stop here. In 1916, he, uh, there was a, 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 uh, uh, what am I trying to say here? A tunnel that collapsed and it trapped a bunch of workers near Lake Erie. And he fashioned a hood to protect his eyes from smoke because it was a lot of smoke. And he had some air tubes so that he can go down and rescue those people. And he did. This was the first gas mask Garrett Morgan uh, created. Again, necessity. We got to go rescue these people. I can't breathe or see. I'm going to put a hood on and we're going to put some piping that's going to drag along the ground where the air is clear so I can breathe and rescued so many people. And then uh, he went into woolen fabric and he noticed um, as he was sewing the wood, woolen fabric that the, the, the needle would start to heat up so much that it would burn the fabric. And so he created a solution, a chemical solution that he could dip the needles in that would not allow for the friction. And then he noticed in the sewing process that the wool would lay down slick. Mm. And he was the first person to invent a perm for black hair because the hair of wool, the hair of wool, y'all, like very Jesus. similar. Come on now. And <laughs> he became, before there was a Madam C.J. Walker or Annie Malone or anyone, Garrett Morgan had, became rich selling a chemical solution to straighten black hair. Wow. Now, I didn't know that. I knew a bunch That's of Garrett Morgan. Second. Wow. And I think about that, you know, to, to be able to look at the, the fabric and go, huh, how else can this be used? Huh. Oh, this worked on the wool. Our hair is like wool. I wonder if it would work on it. So he tried it first on, you know, a, a, a dog that had hair like that. 
slick down, straight. And you know, we were obsessed with straight hair back then <laughs> for obvious reasons, because we were looking at our whole lives through the lens of whatever. Anyway, but his, his gas mask became the blueprint for the gas masks that were used in World War I. And um, his device was so popular that he was selling it around the country, but he couldn't sell it because he was a black man and no white man would buy such a device from a black man. So here's what he did. Here's what he did. He went out and uh, pretended to be a Native American and he, he called himself Big Chief Mason. And he was actually the side, he, he was the sidekick to the actual inventor who was a white man. They'd bring the chief out, but the white man didn't invent this, he did. And he would pretend to be the sidekick to the white man who was selling it and they sold a lot. He died with a lot of money. I wanna say that out loud uh, and employing a lot of people because the reality is, you know, unfortunately in this country, you know, uh, black folk couldn't uh, invent a lot of things. He died July 27, 1963 in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, but there's so much, not just the gas mask, not just uh, perms, the traffic light. I think about, you know, we, we talk about the traffic light. You're driving, so many accidents were happening in the early parts of the automobile because people are stupid. <laughs> I just want to say that. And, you know, when do I go? When do I stop? It was Garrett Mor Morgan who decided, oh, we need to have a stop and a go traffic light. To this day, that traffic light, this man came out of his brain. So I just, I want to spend time today, you know, just not just remembering people, but connecting the dots, right? Because invention comes out of something. You know, when I think about all of the people who quote unquote invented something, what was their hardship? What was the pressure point? What was the thing that drove them? We, we act like folks are just genius, that they pop out of the womb and they're just so smart. There's usually a catalyst to genius. Yeah. This man had a sixth grade education ostensibly right but he's self-taught but understood wanted to know the inner workings of a thing didn't just work in a sewing machine factory let me see how this thing works oh i can fix this i can fix these sewing machines oh let me open a sewing machine shop oh let me make clothes and open a clothing shop let me employ people let let me figure out oh people need rescuing let me figure out how to get down there and get them out Folks keep having accidents. Let me figure out how to stop this. He couldn't stop figuring stuff out. And, you know, even being black in America, born in 1877, he died uh, with money. And I, and I want to say, you know, um, probably more than some of us have today, probably more money than I have. But I want to celebrate the folk that we don't talk about often. And he should be a household name. And if this is the first time you're ever hearing about Garrett Augustus Morgan, don't feel shame. Our education system is designed for you not to celebrate people like this. We're here today, and I want to thank Hyundai for uh, making this a commitment. Hi, Drew. You're back. Hey, I'm back. <laughs> you, you, of course, I know you knew Garrett Morgan. I knew Garrett, I, I, I knew Garrett Morgan. Um, you know, when I, when I grew up in, in Mississippi, the Baptist church, we had every, every Sunday during, um, during February was a Black history program, like every Sunday. It wasn't just one Sunday, right? And the Black history was really infused in, in, all of the, in all of the holiday pageants. When you did a Christmas speech or Easter speech, one of your recitations had to be, you know, you know, Paul Lawrence Dunbar or something like that. You know what I mean? That's just the way, that's the way we did it down there. But I had no idea that the the whole part of the gas mask uh, was born out of trying to save lives. Or, and I did, and I definitely didn't know about the whole hair care piece of it. Now I knew about the traffic light and about and um, about the the story around that he that people wouldn't buy from a, from a black man. So he said, "Okay, I got this this white guy over here, and I'm and I'm the sidekick or whatever." But just the sheer ingenuity of that, the fact that you can look right now and see how that that runs through our our veins, right? That ingenuity, that solving for to make the best out of whatever our situation is, that's just sort of innately who we are as a people. That's been that resilience has been passed down. It shouldn't we shouldn't have to rely on it so much, but it is part a part of our dna and our makeup but you know what um pressure makes a diamond right and i think in, in many ways mm, i'm gonna say it out loud without the pressure without the pressure the greatness wouldn't be here and and yes it's exhausting 
you know, but I think of, you know, Dunbar High School in Washington, D.C., one of the greatest high schools in our history today is one of the worst high schools, uh, became one of the worst high schools in D.C. And it gave us some amazing human beings, right? But there's, there's a price to be paid sometimes when, when things are too easy, when everything is just, it's just a given. Like that high school was so amazing that people would move from across the country to put to live in that neighborhood to put their kids in the early 1900s to put their kids in that school their children in that school and now it's like so you get complacent i think success makes you complacent sometimes if you're always on your heels which is why i never rest on my laurels people are like karen stop and smell the roses if i stop to me if i stop and revel in all the things that i've done then the things that are in front of me i i i, I won't have the same hunger to do it you know, I think about being in my 20s, I was writing like two or three books a year. I don't have it in me to do that anymore, Drew, because I don't have to. Like, and I had to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was a driving force. And now, you know, you have to find the things that motivate you. I, I think being in bondage and coming out of bondage <laughs> and having to figure it out or else makes you really, really ingenious, which is why we have to have these moments in history and not even call it Black history because to celebrate what people have done through the most horrific situations to me is the story of America. Oh, yeah. And, and, it, and it should be woven into the fabric of America that these things happen because they didn't happen because great people sat in a room sipping tea and there was a kite that was flown and electricity was, you know, no, it probably happened something like um, somebody in bondage had to figure something out or else get a whipping, you know, and, oh, look at this flag that Betsy Ross sold. Please stop right. with the mythology. You know damn well Betsy Ross ain't sold no flag. A hundred percent. And not to mention the fact that there's that all of the things that were born out of there's gotta be an easier way. I'm the person who's gonna have to do it, but I don't wanna die doing it, or I don't wanna break my back doing it, or I don't wanna take 10 years off my life doing it. So let me figure out a way to to to, you know, they weren't using this word then, but automate it, right? And that genius, I, I, that genius right there, here's what's so sad about denying the genius of Black people and, 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 and denying the true history of America is that um, it shouldn't just be little Black kids wanting to aspire to be Gary Morgan. Right. That's the perfect example for a little white kid, too, who, who uh, is interested in science or who's interested in innovation, Right. Like you're robbing your own kids of that, of, of the real history, right? It shouldn't just be little black kids want, want to be that because any little kid should want to be somebody who created jobs for other people, who, who created things that saved people's lives even to this day, whose legacy lives on long beyond their death. And we have to make sure that we lift up and amplify those names or history will completely forget it. There are too many people that don't know that a black person put that, that, uh, that red light, that stop light up there. Garrett Morgan also, um, uh, the company was GA Morgan hair refining company. Uh, I wanted to say that. And the mask that he created, not only world war one, uh, fashioned their gas masks after it, but also of course, firefighters and rescue workers later, uh, later on used that design as a model for what they would do. So when you see a firefighter or a rescue worker have on that hood, you could thank Garrett Morgan Sr. All right, 866-801-8255. And I'm just, you know, for me, I want to just drop different things. I also went down a rabbit hole into Kentucky because I'm like, man, Kentucky, just yesterday, as I mentioned, Berea College, what else Kentucky? You know, we talked today about Kentucky being in the bottom five of every category, bad, you know, health, uh, education, poverty, but Kentucky had to be an amazing place for black people, you know, in the 1800s and the 1900s and Ohio, you know, yeah. where he ended up, right? So you think yeah. about, you know, uh, Toni Morrison's beloved. Ohio was another kind of inflection point in our history for black people. And we should kind of go down those rabbit holes and see 
what the communities look like because this was an all black community that he came out of. So clearly he had a sense of agency and a sense of self. He felt worthy enough to be able to apply his brain, learn, knew he could learn, wasn't discouraged. You know, there was something about that place in Kentucky, again, Harrison County, Claysville, Kentucky, that produced this man that went on to do all of these great things. So I want to, you know, as we do these pieces, you know, I, I hope that some people will, you know, go down their own rabbit holes and, and pick out their own thing. If it's the hair care piece, do that.